This app could be easily published in the App Store. Hi there, my name is Angel, and in this channel, we talk about things like AI, tech, business, and personal growth. In today's episode, we're going to use Cursor to build an iOS app. Specifically, we're going to make a flashcard app that I designed. I called it Bobo Cards, and this is roughly what we want to build. It's just a flashcard. You can press the play button to hear the sound of the word bird, what it sounds like in Mandarin or Cantonese. So this is the app that I want to make today and you can follow along in this journey. Okay, so this is the agenda for today. We're going to talk about how does one make an iOS app. We're going to talk about linking the Xcode project to Cursor and then making the flashcard app for toddlers to learn different languages and how to say things. And we're going to test the app and make sure it works. So how do you make an iOS app? There are some requirements to making an iOS app. You will likely need a MacBook or something that runs Apple's operating system because it's going to make your process much easier. You can easily download Xcode if you have a MacBook. I know that you could do it if you have a Windows computer too, but that's not something that I will go over today as I'm not an expert in that. To download Xcode, you just have to go to the App Store and go over here, search for Xcode, and then download it. I've already done so, so I don't need to do that. This is what Xcode looks like when you open it. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new project. Just a little bit more about Xcode. We're going to use Swift, which is Apple's programming language, or you could also use Objective-C, which is an older language that's still widely used. But for our purpose, we're going to stick with Swift. When you download Xcode, it already comes with a simulator, which will help us see what our app looks like. Okay, so how do we link Xcode project to Cursor? If you haven't already, I have another video talking about how to set up Cursor, how to download it and install it. So check that video out. In this video, I'll assume that you've already gone through the process of downloading and installing and setting up Cursor. Cursor is basically a code editor and a lot of people love it recently because it allows you to do natural language prompting to help you write code. It's also great for developing developers, it will help them write code faster. It's based on VS Code. But again, watch my previous video to learn more about it. Once you downloaded Xcode, you're going to go into Xcode and create a new project. And then you're going to click on app and then you're going to name your product. I'm going to call this Bobo Cards and then I'm just going to create it under this folder, which I've previously created other apps in. And then I'm going to go to cursor and open that folder. See here, the folder that I just created is right here. So I'm just going to open this up and you will see the files that Xcode automatically created for you is there under cursor. So this part is very easy to do. And I would say it's so easy to set up. Now that we successfully linked Xcode to Cursor, we're going to start making a flashcard app for toddlers to learn different things. I'm going to walk you through my process of how I do this. I like to chat with Claude or you could use ChatGPT or whatever to brainstorm what apps I want to build. To save time, I've already designed this app that we're going to build today. I call it Bobo Cards and this is a rough design that I quickly put together in Figma and what we're going to use Cursor to build today. Before you get started building, it's really important to organize your thoughts. To have a mock-up of what you want to build is really great and really crucial to making the process a lot easier. I like to chat with Claude a lot because I like to have it think over what I might have missed and organize my thoughts, organize my prompt in a certain way. The other thing I want to note is that one common question I saw in my previous videos are people asking about like, how do I make sure that the code the AI generate isn't too crappy? I've shared this tool in the past when people asked that you can set rules in cursor to make sure you get more structured code, that your code could be as efficient as possible and that the AI follows certain conventions when it's generating code. This tool called cursor.directory has rules that you could input into cursor. To update the rules, you go to file settings, cursor settings, and over here you'll see rules for AI. So again, it's go to cursor and go to the setting under general, you'll see rules for AIs. I've already inputted something because I previously tested 
to make sure the rules are decent. You can see that because I want to do it in Swift, you can see that use Swift's latest features and protocol oriented programming. I actually generated these rules using Claude. So what I tell Claude is like, hey, I'm trying to use the cursor AI IDE to help me build an app. I want to set up some rules like the attached. Basically, I found something that was decently good in here, but I saw that they didn't have a lot of options under Swift. So I wanted to write my own because this one is kind of okay. It's not great. It, it's not that detailed. So I found one that I liked and I linked it to Claude and I said, can you help me write detailed rules for cursor to follow so I get clean code, a good, fast, secure app. Then Claude gave me some rules and I told it to make it more concise so it uses less tokens and give it to me in an easy to copy and paste format, which it did. This is what I ended up copying and pasting into my cursor rules to make this iOS app. The other thing is when I was mocking this up, I was like, oh, actually, I think I need categories. But it's hard for me to think about all these categories. So I just used something like um, Yasin AI, which is like a chat playground that I got from AppSumo. Uh, I paid maybe a hundred for lifetime uses. AppSumo is basically this marketplace that allows you to buy apps that you can use for a lifetime at a very discounted rate. So I bought this tool and I used this tool to generate the categories. I said, give me 16 categories and it will come up with categories and I can look at how each of the different model give me something different so I can take my pick to see which model came up with the things that I like the most. The next thing I'm gonna do is upload the mockups that I designed in Figma. So this is my app in Figma, right? I'm just going to screenshot it and share it with Claude so it knows exactly what I'm trying to build. And I said, hey, please see attached for what I'm trying to build. I want to make this flashcard app. I want it to have access to three different languages buttons that they can tap on. And then when they press it, it will uh, say what the image represents in that language. I want the text to speech function from Apple to do that. And then I said something like, I want the app to have a light blue background and a menu and setting buttons on the top when the menu is pressed. So I'm describing what my app is. So Claude will help create a prompt for cursor that captures the specific UI design for my images and the functionalities I described. Now that I'm done with creating a rule, I'm going to do command shift I to bring up this composer and I'm going to name it Bobo cards and then I'm going to paste this over here into the Bobo cards notepad. Then I'm going to go to the untitled composer and I'm going to tag the Bobo cards notepad and also add all of these in there. In my command, I'm just going to input this and see what it comes up with. You can see here that cursor is writing all these code for me without me doing anything. After it finished loading, instead of accepting, what you could do is you can click save. Then you go to Xcode and you're going to see this content view. So I'm on the content view tab and right now showing this. It's not really working because I only see hello world. Because we were editing so much code sometimes, cursor, the AI messes up. So what you want to do is just work back and forth with it. It's very common for it to make mistakes but you just have to tell it what's going on and what's wrong. And so after addressing that issue where it's only showing hello world, I now see this layout that is very close to what I am interested in. I'm just going to see and listen. Okay, it doesn't sound like the sound part is quite working yet. Also, under assets, it, it looks like there's no images, right? AI is not going to upload the image for us at this point, unfortunately. So what I'm gonna do is fill in some assets first. I have generated some images using Adobe Firefly because I already subscribed to Adobe. So I just use Adobe Firefly to create some images. And now what I'm gonna do is go back to the content view and see what it is that I need to ask cursor to fix. Okay, I don't hear the sound. So, okay, I'm gonna tell cursor to 
fix this. While we're here, it, it did a great job giving me the first step. So I'm going to commit the changes so I don't have to go back and forth and revert if something goes wrong. I'm going to do command K, which opens up this terminal instruction that I would say it add and help me commit the changes so far and I'm gonna just submit and then it's gonna input this now that I did this I'm gonna go to cursor and then go back to command shift I to open this I'm telling cursor that there's no sound please help me fix it accept all and then I'm gonna open Xcode again oh. go go okay so I have gotten it Dog. to work all three sounds go. right Go. And then I want it to swipe left for the next card. Right now it's not doing that. So that's the next fix I'm going to do. Cursor is great because it's telling me don't forget to implement a swipe right gesture to go back to the f previous card. Okay, swiping left works. Swiping right works, but we only have two pieces of data in there right now. So that's why it's not really doing everything. Right now, this is sample data that is being used in cursor I'm, and what I would do if I were to make this app live is tie it probably to a database so for now I'm just gonna tweak a little bit more of the UI today okay so my computer crashed and I didn't get Dog. as far as I had hoped so oh. this is what we ended up with at the end of the day it is a Dog. working flashcard app and you can swipe left and right. The next thing I would do to implement my design is to set up a database so that we would have all the categories fully functioning with images for everything. So um, that's as far as I can go today. But if you're interested in part two, leave a comment below and I'll create part two. Don't forget to subscribe and give me a like if this video was interesting or helpful to you. Thanks for watching. I wasn't able to really record yesterday because my computer kept crashing, but I do want to show you this is very close to what my mock-up is. And I did this in maybe like two, three hours. Can you hear? It has a sound. Apple. And then... And then over here, you can do animals. Right? You can swipe left and right. And then you can change language. I ended up adding a database. I just use Superbase because that's what I'm familiar with and I, I like to use. But yeah, this app could be easily published in the App Store. I did it really quickly using cursor and honestly there's like no excuses for anybody who wants to build, build an app today to not do it because it's so easy to do so. So that's my flashcard app and I'll let you know when it get, gets out into the app store. Thanks. Elephant. Giraffe. And you can do different Hong Mao, Lo Fu, Ban Ma. And also Hing different categories. Hing